Facebook is a great way to connect with people, get information out about events, as well as share pictures and create community. But for the classroom, it's probably not the best place to create an online community. If you're using Facebook groups for your students, here are five things that you need to know about protecting yourself and your students when using Facebook. And stick around for the school-friendly alternatives to Facebook groups where you can still build community with your students, but in a much safer environment. The first thing we need to understand about Facebook is there's a difference between a Facebook group and a Facebook page. A group can be set as private and locked down a little bit more, whereas a Facebook page is public and anyone can like or follow the content. Most often you will see this as having private Facebook groups for classrooms or academic groups, and you will see pages for general school information on behalf of the school. Now that we know the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group, the second thing that you need to know is probably the most important. If you're going to use a Facebook group for your classroom or the school is going to use a Facebook page representing this school, either way, you must have written permission from each student. So we need to get that written permission from their parent or guardian. We need to get that permission that says that we can share their name, share pictures, or any other information that you're going to share about them. This is an absolute must that we have this signed document. No matter if it is a private group for a classroom or a public page that the school runs, if students are going to be on that page, you must have that written consent. This is commonly done in the form of a picture release form that includes information about how their child's information and picture could be used on social media. Without this permission, do not assume that you can post information or pictures about your students. Without explaining too much, not every parent or guardian is okay with having their child displayed on public social media platforms, even if they are private groups. And we also do not know the ins and outs of every child's situations. So for privacy reasons, we must have that parental consent and respect the privacy and give the option to our students, families to make the decision themselves. Now you might be thinking, but I have a private group that only my students' parents are in. This can be okay, but it's really not bulletproof for a couple of reasons. The group is still searchable, somewhat viewable, like who is in the group and some general information about the group. And you're going to get outside people that will ask to join. Also, if your students are under 13 and they want to be a part of the group, we are actually asking them to break the rules by creating a Facebook account since they're not old enough to have one. Number three is a cautionary item I would mention to teachers about the line between our personal lives and school lives gets very blurred when we use a social media platform that is so intertwined with our personal lives. Parents will send you friend requests and students will as well. This will be your decision if you accept these requests or not, but it can also cause unneeded stress about whose requests you accept and whose you do not. Once a friend request is accepted, this invites parents and students into your personal lives as it appears on Facebook, which can be an okay thing or maybe something that you just don't want to share with them. Staying along the lines of personal and work boundaries with a Facebook group, you're opening yourself up to being accessible all the time. Since we're mixing personal and work, you will get notifications where parents will ask questions or comment and you can choose to answer later, but more than likely you'll want to reply right away, no matter what time of day it is. So this can be okay for a few things, but not great when a comment or post comes in about a situation that you can't stop thinking about it until it's handled. And then when we're back in our classroom during school hours and we go to update our Facebook group, it'll track us and it will show our friends that we're active now on Facebook. And we have to think about what that sounds like and what that means uh, to our parents, right? They may say, why is this teacher active on Facebook? Shouldn't they be teaching the class, right? And it's okay, we are updating our Facebook group for school during school hours, that's okay, but we have to see how that might look. And so we open kind of this can of worms by allowing those friend requests to come through because they're able to see when we're active on the platform. And then we also need to think about, we've opened up the Facebook Messenger option as a form of communication. 
And unless you've set that as your desired form of communication, we don't really want Facebook messages coming from parents about school topics, right? And one just quick tip about time boundaries. Make it clear when you're available for parent contact and when they can expect a reply from you. Whether they call, email, text, message, or any of the above, you can have that same standard. But let them know how to contact you and let them know when it is appropriate time for them to contact you. Our fourth item to address about Facebook or using other sites for community is you must set out clear expectations of the rules and how you expect the participants to respond. If someone is not abiding by your standards or school standards, it is perfectly fine for them to be removed from the group. There are settings to help with this for some social media sites, but we wanna make sure that what we are putting out there is professional and friendly, and we expect the same thing from our commenters. And with this comes group monitoring. It brings us to our last item we must be aware of. Even after you make a Facebook post, you need to continually monitor the comments. This can be challenging when we want to separate school and home life with constantly getting notifications about our Facebook classroom group. And I don't like that this potentially puts teachers on the clock all of the time because everyone has access to Facebook and this 24 seven community. This can be true of other online communities we create too with other tools, but people will respond differently depending upon the environment that they're posting in. And we found that if it's an educational type tool, the comments need less monitoring because we've set that standard of an educational environment versus a social environment. You can probably tell by now that the answer to my question of whether teachers should have a Facebook group for the classroom community is no. <laughs> I It's just not my favorite. Um, so while Facebook can offer some communication and collaboration benefits, it's important for teachers to carefully consider the potential drawbacks and alternative platforms available that prioritize student privacy, accessibility, and set that clear separation between personal and professional lives. So some alternatives that are free communication tools that take extra precautions on student privacy and have social media-like features that create community are Seesaw, Remind, Blooms, Talking Point, and Class Dojo. I hope that you've got value out of this video. Please like and subscribe and let me know what tool you use to create community in your classroom. We'll see you in the next video.